Okay, and before we jump into question eight, I just want to kind of summarize some of the big ideas with equations of lines. So uh, one of the things that we should be coming to an understanding of at this point is as long as I know two pieces of information or pieces of information that are equivalent to this information, I should be able to come up with the equation of any line on the Cartesian coordinate plane. Um, so for example, if I knew that a particular point um, that, that a, a line goes through a particular point. So you can see I've placed a dot here at 6, 4. And that I could say, for example, that um, it goes through that point and maybe it has a slope of like negative 2 thirds. So something like this roughly. So where I'm going from here down 2 and then over 3. right? That's enough information to come up with the equation of that line. Um, and if I want to write the equation of that line in slope-intercept form, I would need to figure out what the y-intercept is. But there's enough information there because I have my change in my x. I'm sorry, that's the change in my y. And I have a change in x. And I have a particular x and y that make this equation true. So using that x, y that I have and my, my change in y, change in x, I could figure out what this y-intercept value has to be uh, way up here. Another thing that I might know, for example, is I could know that a particular point, let's say that it goes, let's say that it goes through this point right here, and I'm told that in addition to going through the point uh, negative 4, 3, that it's perpendicular to this line, right? It forms a right angle with that line. Well, any time that I, I, you know, talk about things being perpendicular to each other, that happens when I rotate the Cartesian coordinate plane through 90 degrees. So if I was to rotate this entire plane 90 degrees, I could observe what happens to this particular change in y, change in x from our original triangle. And what would happen invariably is that the change in y and change in x would switch places. So I might get something that would look like this, right? All of a sudden, instead of being down, um, instead of being down uh, 2 over 3, it would be... Um, you know, I could go, I could I could draw it like this. I could say, you're going up three and then over two, right? So these these things switch places. Um, and uh, you can see this, had a, the original line had a negative slope. The new one would have a positive slope. So if I said, what would be the equation of a line that goes through this second red dot, but it's perpendicular to my original one? Well, instead of going down two over three, which would give me a parallel line, I'm going to go up three and then uh, to the right two. So this... I could put some red dots here. This would be a new line on that point. I could go up three and then over two. And uh, so you can see here I've got this new line, and I'll draw the line that goes through it. And this new line is perpendicular. It forms a right angle. I could put the right angle symbol here with the original one. Um, and I could come up with the equation of that line just using the fact that I know its slope would have to be positive, uh, what, positive, three halves and uh, I've got a couple different points that I could use to, to figure out which um, I could use either x y point to figure out my y intercept so having said all that just let's try and look at the big picture what we're doing here in question number eight and consider each of these so the first one is uh, probably it is the simplest of the three it says write the equation of a line in slope intercept form and the first one a is a line with a slope of negative two-thirds and a y-intercept of six well that's per perfectly given me exactly what i need to know um, so if i'm writing it in slope intercept form that is y equals mx plus b m is my slope and b is my y-intercept so i'm given both of those i'm given the slope and i'm given the y-intercept so i can go ahead and write y equals negative two-thirds, that's my slope, multiplied by x, and then plus six. So this is the equation of a line that has a slope of negative two-thirds and uh, goes through a y-intercept of six. Let's move on to part b. It says, a line with a slope of three-sevenths that passes through a given point. So here I've got some point on the plane, and I'm given the y-intercept, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm given the slope, but I need to figure out what the y-intercept is. So again, I write the equation of line in slope-intercept form, a generic one, mx plus b. And I'm going to plug in the information that I know. I know for the point that I was given, I have a y-value of 8. I know that I have a slope of 
up 3 over 7. Whoops, I wrote a 3. Up 3 over 7. And I also know that I am going through the point where x is 14. And then I just write plus b. So doing a little bit of arithmetic, um, 3 sevenths times 14. 14 divided by 7 is 2. So this ends up becoming 8 equals 6 plus b. And then finally, if I take away 6 from each side of this equation, it's pretty clear to see that my y-intercept b is the number 2. So again, I, I had my slope, and now I have my y-intercept. So I can go and write the equation of this line. It is y equals uh, up 3 over 7, and then times x. And then I'm starting at a y-intercept of 2. So this is the equation of a line. That goes through, uh, well, it does, it will go through the point 14, 8, and it has a slope of 3 sevenths. By the way, fun fact, because it does go through the point 14, 8, if I take this x and this y value and I plug it into that equation, it will make this statement true. The left and the right hand side will be the same because this point 14, 8 lies on that line. All right, let's move on to question C. So on C, I'm given two points, uh, and I'm asked to, again, write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form that would go through those two points. And if I was visualizing this on the Cartesian coordinate plane, and I, and I could, uh, the two points that I'm given were, they're not particularly important, except if I want to get the problem right. I've got one of them is at 1, 2. So over 1, up 2, here's a point. And the other one was over 4, and then down 4. So 4, negative 4, so it's roughly that. So these are the two points. And just from looking at this sketch, I can see, you know, roughly about, you know, where my, my, my y-intercept should be. It's, you know, it's somewhere in this region here. So I'm trying to find the equation of this line that goes through 1, 2, and then 4, negative 4. Okay, so... The mechanics, what do we have to do this? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the slope of this line. And the slope of any line is a very simple ratio. It is the change in my y value, so I'll underline my y's in blue, divided by the change in my x values, and I'll underline those in green. So what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at a delta y, and I'm going to divide that by the delta x change in y over change in x. So if I look about if I look at each one of these, I'm going to choose to write my delta y as oh, I'll just use 2 minus a negative 4. So you can see the order I went. I went from this first point to this second one listed here. And in my denominator, right? I'm going to again find the change in my x values. So I'm looking at uh 1 and then I will subtract from that the number 4. So the change in y is 2 minus minus 4, and the change in my x value is 1 minus 4. That numerator simplifies to the number, um, is it 6? Yes, it is 6. And the denominator ends up being 1 minus 4, which looks like the number negative 3. So my slope here... Um, this can't be it can't be it can't be right. My slope here when I simplify this, the slope is uh, six divided by negative three, or it's very simply negative two. So, so I'm going to write that down. Slope uh, is negative two. Now I want to take a look. You know, let's go back to that graph real quickly. As I look at this graph, right, it's very reassuring to see. Oh, take a look at this, right. Yeah, this does have a negative slope. And apparently, if I was to start at any one of these points and go down down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, it does land there. So that's a nice visual confirmation that the calculations I'm doing are correct. Um, so let's continue. Now that we know our slope, we can use either one of our points. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go ahead and select the first point. That first point has an x value of 1 and it has a y value of 2. So if I want to come up with the equation of this line, we're looking at y equals uh, mx and then plus b. So y, which is 2 for the point that we selected, equals my slope was negative 2. My value of x was 1 and then plus b. So I'm looking at 2 equals negative 2 plus b. And if I want to solve for b, I'm just going to add 2 to both sides. So uh, negative 2, I'm sorry, 2 plus 
uh, 2, because I'm, I'm adding 2 to each side. 2 plus 2 is 4. So my y-intercept b is the number 4. Now, I've completely run out of room here to write, have a credible spot to write my answer. Well, there's enough room over here on the sides. So let's go ahead and write this down. The answer is that y is equal to negative 2x. There's my slope times x and then plus a value of 4 for b. So there is the answer for part c. And finally, in question d, we're given, uh, again, a couple pieces of information here. One of them is we want to find a line that is perpendicular to the line y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2. And when we look at that slope, down 3 over 2, for example, uh, we know that if we rotate through 90 degrees and we get the slope of the new line, the slope of the new line that we're, that we are looking for, we're looking for, um, we're working with a slope of, it would be positive 2 thirds, so up 2 over 3. And that's, that's not bad, right? That's pretty straightforward. We're just gleaning the slope from this particular value. And because this is in slope-intercept form, of course, this is very straightforward. I will caution you, there's no reason why I have to give you the equation in slope-intercept form. So, for example, if you had an equation, for example, like 3x plus 2y uh, equals... Hmm, actually, I think this would be... Now, if I, if I put 16 there... I think this would be the same thing. So uh, what I would do here is I, I need to get this in slope-intercept form. So I, I could solve for y by taking away 3x from both sides. So I could get uh, 2 times y equals negative 3x plus 16. And then if I divide both sides by 2, I would get y equals negative 2 thirds x and then plus 8. So I show you this because... If you were told, hey, find the equation of a line that's perpendicular to this line, right? You might be like, well, wait a minute, what's the slope of that? Well, it turns out if you solve this equation for y, you find out that it's the exact same equation as the one that you're given. So the slope of this is negative three halves. So uh, don't let's not just don't panic if you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm given something slightly different here. What do I do now? Hey, just relax and, and let the math guide you. Okay, so we do know because it's perpendicular, our slope is two-thirds. And then the final thing is, what's our y-intercept? Again, just like before, we are given an x value, and this time it's 6, and we're given a y value of 4. So the question is, what would be the y-intercept if we're starting at this point, 6, 4, and we're using this up 2 over 3 pattern? So let's go ahead and plug things into the generic form of an equation in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. The y value that we have is the number 4. My slope is 2 thirds. The value of x is 6. And I'm trying to figure out b, my y-intercept. So uh, 2 thirds times 6, 6 divided by 3 is 2, times 2 is 4. So I get 4 equals 4 plus b. Well, that's a very, that's a very interesting value of b because you can see if I take away 4 from each side, right, I get that 0 is what b is, right? My y-intercept, b is nothing. So here we go. We've got our y-intercept and we've got our slope. So now I can write the equation of this line. It's very simply y equals 2 thirds times x. And if I wanted, I could put plus 0, right, explicitly showing here that my y-intercept is 0. But that's not necessary at all. I could just say y equals 2 thirds times x. And that line would have the property of being perpendicular to y equals negative 3 halves x plus 8. Um, and it would also be passing through the origin. So that's the end of the uh, solutions to the individual, I'm sorry, the study team test for Chapter 5.